This is the start of a four-part GraphQL series for absolute beginners. We're going to be implementing some of the basic concepts in GraphQL uh, so you get a better understanding of how it works. Now before you go through this, I would recommend you knowing a little about what GraphQL is and some of the concepts around it. So if you're not familiar with it already, I would go to graphql.org and just check out the learn section and it'll give you kind of a good idea of what it actually is. So in this beginning video, what we're going to do is a hello world example. Um, and so let's go ahead and jump into that. So I have Visual Studio Code up here and I have an empty folder open with it. So you wanna do the same or any code editor that you like. And then we wanna initialize our project. So I'm gonna do this by opening up terminal, which I can go up here and say terminal, new terminal. From now on, I'm just gonna just open it from the hotkey, but there's, there's the start of it. All right, and here we're going to say yarn init, and I'm going to say dash y to initialize everything. Now I'm using yarn, but you're welcome to use npm instead if you prefer. And we're going to be using node for this, so make sure you have that installed. And I'm using version 10.9 right now, so you want to do just a, a newish version of node. Um, so now that we've initialized yarn here, or if you can also do npm init if you prefer that, we're gonna go ahead and install some dependencies. So I'm gonna say yarn add Apollo server and GraphQL. Now I made a video about why I'm using GraphQL, or not GraphQL, but Apollo server. I'll link that below if you're interested why I'm choosing that. All right, so now that we have installed those, we're gonna go ahead and get started with the actual code. So I'm gonna create a new file here. I'm gonna say source index.js. So here we're gonna start by saying const, and we're going to uh, import from the Apollo server package. And we're gonna say Apollo server. And we're also gonna get GQL from there as well. Now, for those of you that know what Babel is, we're not gonna be using that for this particular project just to keep it simple. Uh, so this is the import syntax that we'll use. So here we're importing from the Apollo server module and getting these two things. So the first part of uh, GraphQL is creating a schema or also known as type defs. So we're gonna say GQL here, which parses the string. And then we're gonna do a string template here, um, which is what this is. Um, and then inside of here, we can actually write a schema or a GraphQL schema, and that's what we're gonna do. So usually you're gonna have a type called query. Um, so here's the name of it. And then we're gonna put inside of it a uh, field called hello. And now we have to say what hello returns, and hello is going to return a string. Um, and I put an exclamation mark so it is not null. But we're going to talk more about that in the next video. So this is my entire GraphQL schema right now. And I call it type defs and put in a variable. I'm going to create the resolvers for it as well. And now the resolvers, I'm going to have a map. And it's going to kind of closely match the relationship here. So we have an outer thing called query. And inside we have hello. And then here's where we actually say, what do we return when the hello query is called? So here we're gonna have a function and we're gonna say hello world. All right, so now we have our type defs and our resolvers. We can create an instance of Apollo server. And all we're gonna do is pass in the type defs and the resolvers. Um, and then the next step is to just start the server. We can do that by saying server.listen, um, and then we can say dot then. And one of the things that we could get here is the URL, and we can just log that. So server started um, at, and then paste in the URL. And I'm just gonna use a string template here so we can put in the variable URL. So now when we start up our server or run node on this file, it's gonna start up the server um, it's going to automatically listen on port 4000, but we can pass in probably uh, an object map here and pass in what we want it to listen on instead if we want to, or maybe you pass it up here. Uh, but anyway, we're doing dot then, waiting for it to uh, start up, and then we can grab the URL. We're destructuring it uh, right there, and then we're just logging that. So let's go ahead and run our example now. So here I'm going to say node source slash index.js. Um, and we can see it started up and I can click on this link here or go to my uh, localhost 4000 in my browser uh, and we'll see something like this. Now I've been to this before, so I'm gonna see stuff here. 
Um, yours probably looks more like this where it's totally blank. Maybe if I refresh it, it looks more like it and probably nothing over here. Uh, so quick rundown of what this is. So this is GraphQL Playground. Um, and this is something that comes bundled with Apollo server. And uh, we can basically access and make requests to our GraphQL server easily here and kind of explore the data. So what's going on is the most important tab or a very important tab is this schema over here. So when if you've heard people talk about GraphQL being something that's self-documenting, um, this is an example of what they mean by that. So for example, here I can see the entire schema uh, or everything that I can query and I know how to query it based on this little guide right here. So for example, we only have a single query. We can see it under the queries. It says hello, and we can see it also returns a string and we can click on it. There's not really any helpful details here because we have uh, nothing really, we have a basic string right now. But we're gonna visit this later and we're gonna get more information about what we pass in. But we can use this to know how to call our GraphQL schema. It's very helpful. Um, the other thing is we have tabs here. We can create new tabs. We can also click on the cog up here. We can add some settings. The default settings are probably going to be okay. Um, and then the other thing is over here, we're going to actually write queries and then queries or mutations if you've heard of those. Um, and then over here, we're going to see response of what we get from the server. All right, so that's kind of the basics of what this is. Um, and then we can also see a history of commands that we've run before. All right, so here I'm going to say, you could say query, um, and then we're gonna say hello. So here I'm saying I wanna use the query type, and then I wanna grab the hello uh, field. So we're gonna hit run, and we're gonna see hello world over here. And you'll notice the mapping is very similar, uh, the shape of it. And we can see hello responded, um, and then we got hello world back from it. And again, we could come over here, and we could change what's responded from here. Uh, we can put an exclamation point, and we can capitalize this so it's a little bit more proper. We can restart our server, um, and then we can re-request it. Um, we're going to get new data, and we're going to get the, a different string back. So whatever we're turning from a resolver, we see right here. Um, just another quick note about the query over here is you don't have to actually say query. Um, it's implied, so you could do just curly braces like this and say hello. Anyway, this is the hello world for GraphQL. You made your first GraphQL query. Um, request to your server and we had a small GraphQL server set up.